Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Sarah here with Furniture Flip by Sarah. And in today's video, I'm going to take you through the whole process of repainting this piece here. This is a client's uh, client owned piece, so they have chosen the color and the design. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring that to life for them. I'm going to take you through step by step everything that I'm going to do. So if you are new to furniture flipping or you're just interested maybe in how um, I flip pieces, what products I use, this is a great video for you. Um, and I'll just take you guys through everything. Let's get into it. First, I'm just going to go ahead and remove these knobs. We are keeping them as is, so I just need to remove them so I can get started. Now I'm just going to go ahead and use my Dewalt drill to get these doors off. Now that I got the doors off, I'm going to go ahead and start sanding this piece. I'm just going to be using some 120 sandpaper. This company here and brand I picked up at my local home hardware. I'm going to just go ahead and put that on my Dewalt and sand all these pieces down. I am going to be painting these, so I just need to give it a scuff sand. Um, I know I get asked sometimes, like, how much do you need to sand? So for this instance, uh, since I'm going to be painting it, um, it might be kind of hard to tell on camera. But you can see the original finish, the top coat on here so i just want to remove a bit of that shine to help my primer and paint stick to the piece i am also going to be wearing my rz mask this was sent over to me and i have been loving it so far mr furniture flip has one too in a different style that he likes and i'm just going to put this on and get sanding close-up before I keep sanding. This area here has not been sanded and the top has so you can see this area here is not as shiny. It has a little bit more of like a clouding effect to it because I've sanded down the original top coat or finish on it. That way my paint is going to stick a lot better to this surface than let's say a shiny surface here. I know there are paints um, out there that say you don't need to prime. You don't need to do sanding or all this, but from personal experience and with the paint I'm going to be using, I am sanding everything down and I'm going to be priming it all. I got everything sanded for this piece. I would usually go ahead and use my surf prep sander, my detailed one, to sand those down, but I'm currently waiting to get some parts for it that I need to replace before I start using it again. So I just use my go-to, which was my Orbital Dewalt sander. Now to clean this piece, I like using, um, <laughs> oops, let's try this again. So to clean this piece, I'm going to go ahead and use some TSP. I just have it in a spray bottle diluted with water and a microfiber cloth that got pretty dirty from falling on the floor. But let's clean this piece.
just going to go ahead and use my favorite Ben Shalak base primer. This stuff here will block any knots. Um, so for example, this piece is going white, so I'm probably going to have to do three coats, but these knots in the wood usually tend to yellow, and if this piece was cleaned with any uh, products that are like really high with chemicals, that will usually bleed through as well. So this just helps um, ensure that the paint is going to stick, block stains, and helps with a long-lasting finish. To apply the primer, I am just using a $1.25 brush from Dollarama and my microfiber rollers. After I use it to paint a piece and wash it, um, it tends to not be like as fluffy, and then I just use it for priming. I'm just going to start by brushing in any areas that my roller can't get. Um, and then just go ahead and follow with my roller. the first coat of primer on this piece I just have a few more areas to go um, one thing I did want to mention I'm going to be doing three coats of primer because I am going to be painting this piece white if you were to be painting this piece a darker color like let's say black dark gray even navy blue you could get away with one coat and you would be fine as long as you didn't see any bleed through but like I said I want to get that coverage and I want to make sure no stains or anything is going to come up from the wood and make sure this piece is super solid before I go ahead and paint. So I ended up doing three coats of primer on this piece. This way it's nice and solid. I don't see anything bleeding through. I've let it sit overnight. So now I'm just going to go ahead and give it a quick sand with some 220 grit sandpaper to make sure it's all smooth and then I'll wipe that down and I can start painting. So I'm just going to take a orbital sanding sheet with 220 grit and sand this piece down. I'm just going to do it by hand so that way it's not too strong and doesn't take off all my primer. Now that I've sanded this piece down again, I'm just going to go ahead and use a microfiber cloth with some water and just give it a good wipe down, let it dry, and then I can start painting. So for the shelves and the doors, I just have them on this rack here that I made for cupboards. Um, this way it's easier to paint them. I've also done the same steps, primed, sanded, and wiped. So now everything is ready for paint. So now that I'm ready to paint, I'm going to go ahead and use their Benjamin Moore Advanced Line. This is in a pearl finish and I'm going to be using the color Cloud White. I believe this color is pretty popular. I'll put the number on the screen here if you'd like to use it as well. I have used the Advanced line for a little while now and I've loved it. Um, I use it for cabinets. I use it for furniture. It's really easy to work with. Um, it has a really smooth finish to it and it evens out really nicely. They have, I think, probably over thousands of colors to choose from. You can get pretty much anything in the Advanced line and some of their colors if they're not available in the Vance line, they can color match them pretty close. Um, and then you can kind of make a custom color that way. But since this is ready, I'm going to get started. Something that I use all the time instead of buying plastic um, inserts for my trays is just tin foil and that way when I'm done with, done with it, I can just throw it I'm away. I'm gonna go ahead and use my microfiber rollers that I always use, I will link them down below. And then this brush here, I believe it is a purdy brush, a one and a half inch, I'll link it down below as well. You want 
to make sure you really soak your roller in the paint. This helps um, with like roller streaks. I mean, this paint is super self leveling as is, but it is a little tip that I always do that just helps the paint level out. That way when you're rolling, the roller has an even amount of paint around the whole thing. I'm gonna start by painting the doors and shelves first. That way I can use this surface and then just plop them over onto this rack here. To paint these doors, I'm just using my brush to get into the little groove area where the glass sits and then I'm just going over top of that and rolling everything and then once this dries in 16 hours, I will do a second coat and flip it over to do the next coat and I will just repeat this until I'm done. Once I was done painting the doors and shelves, I moved on to paint the rest of this piece. I started with the top and then just kind of worked my way down and I made sure to get into all the little nooks in the cubby area because this cabinet will have glass doors. You will see the inside so I wanted to make sure that was done evenly and it would look really nice once the piece is complete. Sorry for all the background noise, but I got one coat on the whole piece. I'm gonna let this sit for 16 hours. That's the recommended drying time. And then I'm gonna come back and do a second coat of paint. I ended up getting a one full coat on this piece, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my second coat, and I will end up needing three coats total. and spray the hinges. One of you guys actually noted too that I should be wearing my mask when I'm spray painting and that is so true. I don't know why I usually don't. Um, so I got my mask on and the spray paint I'm using is just from rust -Oleum. It's their painter's, painter's Touch and I will be adding a spray paint top coat to these as well. So now that this piece is done being painted, I ended up doing three coats and I used the Benjamin Moore Advance line in the color Cloud White. I am just using the same hardware that it came with. I'm just gonna go ahead and put these on. So the piece is now done and I'm super excited to share it with you guys. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below and let's get to the reveal. So 
here is the final look of the piece. It's all completed. I have staged it to take some photos for Instagram. And I even left a touch-up kit in here. So I always like to put a sample of the paint on here. Um, in case I'm doing multiple pieces for a client or just in general, I can keep track of what sample kit goes with what piece. So in here I have some paint, paintbrush, our business card, and the tacks for the shelf. So everything my client needs is right in there. The hardware is on, hinges are on, everything is good to go. Let me know uh, what you guys think of this video, how this piece turned out. Let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys next week with another furniture flipping video.